I need a wireless headphone just as my wireless camera let me show you my wireless camera so I'm streaming through through the computer my camera is this this thing the oh my goodness you can't see it it's my cell phone uh, I just realized you can't see it um, but that's my camera so I'm using my cameras my cell phone has my camera streaming through my laptop with Streamlabs OBS whatever you want to call it I think it's Streamlabs yeah, Streamlabs is an OBS, they are the same, but I'm using Streamlabs. And um, the camera, I use IV Cam with the cell phone, which you can't see. Um, maybe I should hook up another cell phone to see if two could work together. And um, I could show you this, maybe in another video. And... Um, so i want to just ramble again on a second topic for the day so the first topic of the day which was supposed to be in the chain of command my i looked at b12 b like in b a b c d e f g b y b y y b b maybe b b like vitamin b for brain so i looked at b12 in a discussion and um okay let me lose it on and um i want to now look at chain of command chain of custody um stomach acid the importance of the stomach acid because i i hardly have any notes on this screen and that's why i need to find a way to be my tablet when I want to be my tablet, I don't want to be no computer screen. I want to work the way I feel comfortable, and that's that's why the technology has to work for me. So there must be some way I could learn to share the screen of the tablet when I want to share the screen of the tablet into the software. I have not figured it out yet, my friends, but we would get it as a we'll get it to work when I get time. So, why why B12 is why would I say B12 is a important discussion to start off the chain of custody or the chain of command discussion altogether? Why why would I make that statement? Now, I'm making those statements based on what I'm reading, and um, when you read something and it hits you, it wake, wakes you up. I usually say when you read something and you remember I use the word remember because I think that's what's happening it's like you're remembering how things supposed to be All right and um, I need to get a good thing to hold my camera so I'll stick it outside in the window might be better there right it's outside in the window but um some things would make sense to you and then some things would be unspoken and some things just wouldn't make sense that's what's beautiful about life you need to search such such knock seek find and then work on stuff and stuff and stuff like that because that's what you're doing in life you're already just working on stuff and stuff and stuff like that so you sit and you say well I wanna, I wanna do something with my health in 2024. I wanna get better. I wanna have, you know, more progress in my health. I wanna become a better version of myself. And you say, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's work on becoming a better version of myself. And, and you, you work on that. You work on becoming a better version of yourself. Nobody stops you. But then you ask yourself, well, really and truly, what, what could I do to to make myself a better version of me? And uh, that's where you start asking the, the good questions to, to the heart. You really are asking it to your heart, you know, and your heart would then 
respond and the responses generally are it's not going to be shocking the responses would be great the hot does not lie the hot is the the real guy does not lie hot does not lie hot is where everything sits coherence is in the hot so it's not good on the screen I want to get it better on the screen so what's on the screen screen capture what's on the screen here is uh, an image which I want you to focus on but I don't think I have it I don't have it really good so let me see if I could get it right I have an image on the screen I think it's better now I um, may have to make it a little smaller too yes certainly certainly so it's a little smaller now and I want you to focus on us reading this together us paying some attention to this this little this little image on the screen there which is what I want to discuss in this video today on the chain of command or the chain of custody because sometimes it's important to focus on that part of your life um, which is stomach and um, get things right there first now I'm a, a strong believer in the thing called gates 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 I'm a person who believe that we are all um, born with gates various gates in the neurological functions it's uh, actually about gates genes are turning on and turning off its binary systems that are based on the similar principle that man has copied that we refer to as the and the or the no XOR gates so gates are very important I think this gate here that we are speaking about this gate called the the stomach is a very very important piece that we must emphasize for our kids and the future generation so that we will have better outcomes in the 2024 year to come that's our calendar year and this part of in this part of the world so let's let's look at it from that point of view so I'm looking at stomach acid and you I am going on the assumption here that you you do have an appreciation and I don't have an appreciation because I have to learn what I'm seeing here I do not have a clear appreciation of how these things work you know you go into your mouth you chew your food and you swallow it and um, what's like bolus comes into play you swallow that food after you chomp it up you swallow it it goes down through a pipe here which is called the esophagus and it gets down into a uh, big tank of acid now this is what we should have known in clear detail as children we should know that the teeth chomps the food into finer particles and the saliva um, gets intertwined but we know that we are not really fully taught that the saliva has a lot of enzymes um, you know we it might be mentioned that the saliva has enzyme but the work of the enzymes in the mouth it's never given details when you are casually taking your normal everyday school courses but when you get into health and nutrition you go into the depths and you understand what's happening I believe the whole element of life right now should not be that you race through the important things to study something like history social studies maths now these are not important what's important is your health so the more details you give to a child between the age of 0 to 7 about their health and mind you I'm speaking about the details that might be way above our heads this is what you should be giving children the, the information between 0 to 7 that a child should get should be the highest highest academic highest research level information should be introduced to a child in the age 0 to 7 it should confuse the child so much that the child wants to go and sleep that's what we should be giving our children because from 0 to 7 once you give the child that you are programming the child to actualize his health through the programming process and maybe you don't understand the programming process I don't but I have often heard and I have seen it in literature that it is said that in the age 0 to 7 the children are sponges and they absorb the programming but if you would program if you want to program a child to really take on things seriously you don't expect them to learn anything 0 to 7 they are just sponges soaking up but then 
it triggers off in the in the in the developmental stages thereafter it triggers off into the adulthood it triggers off as time passes by and so it's important that we really do not hold back on our children in, in with the introduction of these difficult or so-called difficult topics there is nothing difficult for a child we are the difficult ones because we are the ones who has all these barriers gates into our mindset because of our traditional acceptance of information and our traditional nuances and biases towards information and stuff like that so breaking those generational barriers and those generational boundaries of limitations is critical towards the emancipation of our children in terms of the health and the health knowledge the information that they consume about health and what they do going forward again my purpose in this life here is to say i am not the one who would help you you are the one to help you and when i say i i don't mean the guy speaking here that's what you have to say you have to say I am not the one to help you. Don't look at the help from an externality. Look at the one from an internalization point of view. I am the one to help me. I cannot help you, but I am the one to help me. Me, that person. I am the one to help me. Nobody else could really help me when it comes to my help. You could assist in helping get some supplements. You could assist in directing me to some information. You could assist in helping me get in a plate of food. You could assist in helping me become more conscious about exercise, nutrition, sleep, rest. But when it comes to making the actual decision and reprogramming myself to ensure that good habits are converted into actual programs, I am the one responsible every time, every day, in every way. And so to become a better version of ourselves, of my, of myself, I need to know more about what I'm doing and know about, and I need to know more about who I am. I'm born with a, a stomach. I'm born with teeth. I'm born with tongue. I'm born with ears. I'm born with nose. I'm born with hair. I'm, you see all these things, so get to know them better. They are part of you. You are the ones, you are the one running that community called your body. The community of trillions of different trillions of cells but each one existing in its own community as they say the hair follicles are the hair what is the hair made up is it not a combination of cells of a specific type of cell or is it the same cell that is in the heart or is it the same cell in the fat is it the same cell in the skin your toe your nails the hair the cells in your hair nah so the community of cells that cause your hair or is your hair or the community of cells that is in your nose that is your nose the community cells in your in your um in your knees and the community cells in your heart and the community of cells in your love liver they are all different communities but they work together as a system and they help function and create what they call the organism the body so what we want to do here is look at the community of the stomach acid I call it the gatekeeper of the body. I call the stomach. Now I understand that the stomach is the gatekeeper. Now you may say, well, how could it be the gatekeeper when you are the one who's eating whatever you want to eat? Well, should be told, should be told, you go eat everything. And everything that you eat would have something that needs a gatekeeper to present his pass, his passport, his ticket for clearance, acceptance beyond the borders. So, we eat the food, the, the fruits. What happens? The fruits goes down into the pipe and then goes into the stomach. But just before it goes into the stomach, there's a little valve there that's closed. You know, it's closed just to, before you enter the stomach, uh, if I could do it. Is coming down there is this valve that is closed it's closed and then their food we call it the bolus I think that's the word they use but the clump of food goes beyond the valve it gets to push the valve open and goes beyond the valve that's from mouth to stomach now that food could be cooked and it might be sterilized if you cook it but if you eat in the fruits you don't go and cook fruits and you eat the fruits and in our case in the caravan we eat the fruits when it's falling on the ground from the tree and we don't really bother about that and that's good but 
the, 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 the fruits goes to the stomach, the vegetables goes to the stomach, your food goes to the stomach, and one of the functions of the stomach is to create this acidic substance that would sterilize your food. So what I'm what I'm studying here, what I'm learning here is that the stomach should have acidic levels of about one to two. I'm seeing some research saying up to three. But from most research that I have seen on the internet, it's saying one to two should be the the acidic levels of our stomach. Not zero. Zero is the highest level on the acidic scale. Well, the lowest level which is the most strong stronger acid zero and if you do a casual search on online you'll see they say battery acid is at zero stomach acid is between one and two um casually you'll find that so i don't know i don't have a ph meter to test down there i test my ph here and urine and stuff like that but i can't shove, shove something to test my stomach acid so that's another discussion for another time how do you get to test your stomach acid but the point here is stomach acid has to be very acidic to sterilize the food and if you're looking at that screen that I, that thing that I put up there why do you want to sterilize your food simply put you have bacteria virus organisms pathogens whatever you want to call it coming along on the food that you cannot see because your eye cannot see those micro scopic organism you need a real microscope to see them but they go on the fruits they go in and we eat them uh, when you see people eat maggots you, you, you screen you like Ugh. but you are eating maggots also just that you don't see them sometimes you eat the eggs you don't see them so what so what so this is not the gatekeeper the mouth is not a gatekeeper and when you try to use the risk modality of avoidance you might end up in a lot of issues so here it's not about avoidance it's about acceptance but of course you accept it in your mouth it goes to the stomach it might be sweet in the mouth what sweet in good mouth might be sour somewhere else so it goes down to the stomach and it gets into this acidic substance called the stomach acid it gets um, sterilized now this stomach acid should be killing all bad bacteria, and the good bacteria apparently don't quote me on this apparently the good bacteria survives oh, then again you have to ask this you have to ask yourself you know how does these things happen there are some bacteria that survive the stomach and stomach acid the good bacteria and then those that are not too good for you they die or is it that way the, the great creator who created this whole stomach acid and the gates called the stomach with the stomach acid is great creator that's all that we could do we could just say great creator and we would learn more and more as we go forward with the great creator but the beauty of this whole design is that the food gets in there and it gets sterilized so even though you didn't cook your food it gets sterilized down there now the next thing that happens in that beautiful organism called the gut is that the stomach acid there starts to digest the protein by breaking it into its breaking it into its like its strands making it into little stri strips not eyes visible strips but it uncoils the protein you have a nice little picture here that i'm showing you it denatures the protein or uncoils the protein and you need that to happen so that you get these long strips of protein that we refer to as protein chains or protein chains itself and then these protein chains might be very very long and the same stomach as it says to the mighty body send down the scissors and so the scissors comes down which we call the pepsin and the scissors start cutting this long chain after it's uncoiled start cutting it up into smaller smaller bits and then if you have the right stomach acid the small bits get even further cut up into its constituency smallest part which is the lego blocks of life amino acids so all this is a function of our stomach and the stomach acid wonderful huh? wonderful and this is protein taken in from food sources outside so like animal or plant protein 
That's what happened in the stomach. That's not human being protein. That's you remember animal protein does not go in as protein into your bones and your teeth and it does no no no. Animal protein gets denatured and gets broken down to form amino acids. Amino acids are the binary format in your body. They are either binary they are either amino acids or they are not amino acids. That is the binary solution to amino acids. You don't you don't go and get animal protein and get it into your system. You get amino acids. Now the amino acids of course would go into a creation anabolic cycle or anabolic pathway to create you the protein, which is your human being protein. Whether it's your eye, your skin, your nose, your muscles, blah blah, your neurotransmitters, your enzyme, detoxification enzyme. Um, hormone enzymes, hormones itself, steroids, peptides, the, new, the little things called amino acids which you got from the animal protein or the plant protein becomes, walk its way back to in the creation process, creates back protein. So you bring down protein from animals and plants in your stomach, it gets absorbed and then it comes back into a creation process called well anabolic anabolism to make back your protein your protein your human protein so you don't eat protein to get protein you eat protein to make amino acids and amino acids create human protein maybe you could eat some human beings and then it could give you human protein if that is what you want to do that's fine in fact the body eats itself when you do not have protein it eats away at your muscles and creates ab amino acids to go back and make more other type of protein so it eats the muscles protein to go back and create other types of protein and that's why when you are sick and thing and you're in bed you realize you start losing muscles mass because your body is converting your muscles which is a source of protein to amino acids and then you will take these amino acids and create other types of proteins like your enzymes your hormones your enzymes for neurotransmitters and whatever else it has to create actin myosin insulin all these things are proteins so the fact of the matter is the gatekeeper here, which is the stomach, is a very, very useful, useful guy in our protein synthesis, protein breakdown, protein breakdown, protein digestion. The breaking down of protein is highly done in the stomach. And we all know that pepsin um, and hydrochloric acid, we learn that in school, pepsin and hydrochloric acid gets involved there. Now, what is what is important here is that we've seen and this is where the chain of custody discussion would come in we are seeing activation of the intrinsic factor also being a function of stomach acid now as we mentioned before stomach acid should be in the pH of one and two now intrinsic factor is an issue that has been reported in literature i would have read about it when i was doing my background when I was doing my studies on B12 I would have found that B12 uptake from food sources is it, it could be limited when you have B12 deficiency and you are you are consuming things like meat and but you are not getting B12 it could be that your intrinsic factor is not the best so now I'm asking myself the question in the chain of custody here so intrinsic factor what is it ah intrinsic factor is an enzyme a protein intrinsic factor is a protein so this protein binds to the b12 and gets it into the absorption pattern or get it absorbed and moving across or transporting it or whatever happens something like that but <laughs> funny thing is we don't want to accept or we may not want to accept the most important thing in the body at, at this point in time should really be a focus on our amino acids or our intake of amino acids and protein we all diddle daddle about this diet and that diet when it's, we're supposed to just be doing exactly what was said that we should be doing eating balance balance split and what is balance for you what's available but you have to be conscious that there are things you need protein is a very big need in the body how you get it you have to study that now because it's not just eating one type of food to give you only one set of amino acids we have to get into the discussion where 
protein is no longer spoken about as the word protein. We have to say yes, we eat protein, animal or plants, but we should be speaking about. You see, like how we say, you're buying a B complex, a B complex vitamin, but nobody speaks about B complex. You wanna know what B's does it have? You have B one, B two, B three. I don't even know what B three is. B four, B five. I don't even know what B five is. B seven, B six, B nine, B twelve. You know when you speak about the B's, you say B twelve. Cobalamin B9. Why you speak about the the the, the flow the folate or the folic acid which is man-made part? You speak about it that way. Well, we need to start speaking about amino acids exactly that way. At least let's start with what is called the essential amino acids. So we should be speaking in 2023 to our children and saying to them, you consume protein. In your mouth, you eat protein from your plants, your legumes, your wherever, wherever, wherever you get protein. You eat protein bars, you eat, you drink your protein shake, you that and your this and your this and you eat your meat, you eat your eggs. To get amino acids. And then we should sit and tell them, you would get X amount of methanine and X amount of leucine and X amount of tryptophan and X amount of... And learn each of the essential and teach these to our children that these are the essential amino acids which you need in right ratios and quantity. These are the functions that are known by research today and when you grow big you will learn much more because that's how the creator grows. The creator gives more and more and more and more and people understand why, why and why more as time goes by. We are to teach our children these things because the children should not be sitting here going through what I consider to be a macro scale process of meat goes in, amino acid comes out, amino acid goes back up to make human protein. That is superficial and we are way beyond superficial in this 2023 era. The age of awakening, the age of awareness. We need to focus on allowing our children to go to the details. We have microscope, we could sit at the microscopic level. We should be teaching it to our children at the microscopic level and maybe the nanoscopic level just now. Because when we realize what's happening here, most of our issues, persons are might say, oh, you're, never you're not deficient in protein. Of course, you're not deficient in protein. But you might be deficient in a specific amino acid, maybe even a specific essential amino acid, which causes a, an issue for you. And in this case here, you could ask yourself, what is the essential amino acid? You see, the thinking is what is important because when you get to the level of awareness and consciousness and you sit and you ask yourself, so if the intrinsic factor is a protein, can you tell me? And when you ask that to yourself, you are asking that to the divine. Can you tell me, can you help me to find that whole, that whole concept, that whole principle of what, is creating the amino acid what amino acids are important in creating that that um that whole that whole um intrinsic factor my camera has disconnected ah i'll i'll, I'll be back in in a short while my camera has disconnected battery is running low call came in um, I'm going to leave this up on the screen. It was for you to see. I will cut my, my, my live now and I um, hope that you would ask yourself this question. So just to go recap, to summarize, what we were saying is you look at the stomach acid, very important for sterilizing the food, very important for the digestion or the breakdown of the protein to make amino acids and of course intrinsic factor is important so it gets triggered or it gets signal to be present. It's a protein and intrinsic factor is present. It's very important for B vitamin. You know my take on B vitamin. B vitamin is one of the big cofactors in the whole methylation process. And we are very stressed out now. So the function of methylation has would be tripling in the next few years because of the, the stress from our foods that we are eating. The stress from our lifestyle, the stress from technology, the, the, 
technology that we are using the whole neurotransmitter overactivity and here we would see that the, the need for B vitamins would increase as we go into most stressful state of course not not me I'm, I'm working towards what is called overcoming the truth is in life if you overcome then risk acceptance risk avoidance risk transfer risk mitigation becomes null and void because you have overcome and everything becomes when you overcome everything becomes and when it becomes that's when you realize i am it and it is me so have a good one my friends i hope that this was a very useful stream for you and you would have been blessed and um, i do ask for blessings for you in terms of your health in in this day see you in a while have a good break at this time or a good lunch